Welcome back to our video series, MMORPG Classes 101, where we're taking a look at the way a class is expressed in various MMORPGs. This includes the essentials like combat, utility, and what style of play the class facilitates. And we tie it all together by asking what, if any, aspect of that class should Pantheon, Rise of the Fallen, the upcoming MMORPG by Visionary Realms, consider when designing said class. Of course, this is a very subjective perspective, and in no way a definitive guide, but rather just a review of my experience with the class in the game in question. My name is Theric, Scholar of the Bow, and this is my take on EverQuest 2's Ranger class. The most important lesson is it's not a rogue if it doesn't use daggers. Remember, wizards, when it comes to fireballs, size does matter. Alright class, settle down. It's time to learn to die like a ranger. Jimmy, get the glue out of your mouth. Today, we're going to be talking about the eternal honor of the paladin. Attention class, please be seated. To provide context for my assessment of the ranger class in EverQuest 2, our static group consisted of a ranger, rogue, wizard, paladin, warden, and a cleric played from level 1 through level 35. We primarily did dungeon content, including Black Burrow, The Crypt of Betrayal, Stormhold, The Runes of Arsoon, and finally, Nectropos Castle. So I'll be speaking to the combat arts and abilities I had access to up to level 35, and then using this as a template for the Ranger class. No doubt there are higher level skills that are very impactful that I didn't get to try, but I feel like it played the fundamentals of the class, and they were clear in the time that I was given. In EverQuest 2, all rangers fall under the scout archetype. This means they share some base abilities with several other classes, and have fundamentally similar characteristics. On a side note, when EQ2 first launched, everyone started out as a scout, or one of the other archetypes, and then as you gained levels, you specialized into the various subclasses of the archetype. In the current iteration of EQ2, you're able to start as your subclass right away, so basically the archetype concept remains the same, but the divergent path now starts at level 1. I'll come back to this point later when grading the class identity. The EQ2 Ranger is all about physical range DPS. Rangers get a much greater number of physical ranged abilities, whereas other branches of the scout archetype tend to focus on other areas. Here's the official description of the class. Quote, Rangers are unrivaled in their ability to hunt foes and scout dangers in the untamed wilds of Nora. Known for sneaking safely through dangerous territory, Rangers use stealth, perception, and cunning to seek out enemies and fell them from a distance with a deadly volley of arrows. Rangers depend on agility as their primary stat because it determines maximum power and increases damage." End quote. So from this we can see the key aspects including providing reconnaissance for the group on the utility side of things and maximizing damage on the combat front. Let's break this down and get into grading the combat, utility, and pace of play for the EQT Ranger. With regard to combat, a lot of the ranger combat arts can be grouped into a few different categories. You have simple high damage bow skills like Miracle Shot, Triple Shot, and Searing Shot. These abilities will do very high damage directly from an extreme range. As a ranger, you can initiate combat from a great distance, allowing your groupmates to inflict their attacks before the mob gets to you within melee range. And then there are the ranged combat arts that pair damage with different complementary effects, like Crippling Arrow, which decreases deflection and parry of the target, and Point Blank Shot, which knocks the target back, blurs their vision, and stuns them. Obviously, these make subsequent attacks even more potent. What I really like about this variance is that it provides a tactical consideration as to the sequencing in which you use these skills. Do you want to decrease the target's mitigation first, if, for example, your group is DPS heavy, or do you want to knock the target down first, giving your tank a chance to generate some hate? While the range of these is generally less, they still provide the ranger with the advantage of distance. As for the melee skills, they are, as you can imagine, less impressive. The EQ2 ranger doesn't have a great arsenal when it comes to up close and personal battles. Combat arts like Hilt Strike deal low damage, but interrupt the target. Immobilizing Lunge can root the mob for a quick and dirty crowd control method, and Bloody Reminder puts a weak, piercing damage DOT on the mob. The impression I get is that your stock, mid-combat melee attacks are meant to be used only when all your other abilities are on cooldown, or for a very specific purpose. However, there is one aspect that makes a huge difference with both melee and ranged combat arts. As I said earlier, the ranger is at its heart a scout, and as such, utilizes stealth mechanics for many skills. 
some of your best skills require you to be in stealth to utilize them. Skills like Hidden Shot, a monster of a ranged skill that's pure damage, or Natural Selection, a ranged AoE ability. On the melee side, you have Ember Strike, which inflicts considerable heat damage. Another mechanic the Ranger uses is positioning in combat, so flanking or being behind the target is usually where you want to be. And when positioning is combined with stealth, these are your highest damage potential skills. Melee combat arts like Ranger's Blade are deadly when you use stealth and positioning. It's interesting to me that the Ranger in EQ2 never completely strays from its scout roots, as stealth is extremely important not only from a utility standpoint, but factors heavily into combat efficiency as well. This isn't something you see in other games' versions of the Ranger class. It sets the EQ2 Ranger apart in a very satisfying way, in my opinion. Although it certainly is outclassed on the melee front by other scout classes, at range, a hidden Ranger is a deadly Ranger. So if we group these and consider them by percentage of the overall Ranger skill set, we can see that the EQ2 Ranger is generally about 75% range skills and 25% melee skills. To me, this feels like a reasonable balance, although I might prefer to have a little more melee prowess in exchange for the different stealth abilities. For a grade with regard to combat, I give the EQ2 Ranger a solid B. It's good. It's not great, but it's good. In terms of utility in combat, the EQ2 Ranger has a few tricks up its sleeve. As you would expect with any DPS class, managing hate is key. The Ranger can do this in a few different ways in EQ2. The easiest way is through a single skill called Evade, which decreases threat by a massive amount. But Stalk is an even more effective ability, which not only decreases threat, but also puts the Ranger into stealth. And this is a good opportunity to talk about something that's certainly an issue in EQ2, and that's Ability Bloat. There are simply too many overlapping abilities. While it can be said that the differences in power cost, casting time, and duration make them more or less viable in certain situations, it makes for a nonsensical amount of skill bar organization, not to mention screen space utilization. If ever there was a game that could benefit from a limited action set, it's EQ2. But getting back to the Ranger's utility, they can also provide a valuable group buff to chance to hit and melee damage through skills like Focus Aim and several self buffs to improve situational effectiveness. Several of these come with trade-offs though, like Archer's Fury, which increases ranged damage but decreases defense and Survival Instincts, which decreases slashing and piercing damage while boosting agility, parry, and overall defense. While in theory this seems like an interesting approach, when you consider the balance of melee versus range skills, it's hard to conceive of a situation where I might want to sacrifice some piercing damage for defense. In a more melee ranged balanced version of the Ranger, I could see this being useful. So for a grade in terms of class's utility, it's not that the utilities are poor, it's just that the EQ2 Ranger doesn't really offer much. Stock is really its one outstanding utility, so that helps it get a slightly higher grade here. But as it stands, it gets a grade of C. The EQ2 Ranger isn't the whirlwind type of Ranger you see in other games. It's not about how many attacks per second you can do, but rather more a methodical approach. Personally, I very much like the slower pace of play. I want my attacks to feel impactful, rather than like death by a thousand paper cuts. While a skill like Honed Reflexes does increase the Ranger's haste, it has a long cooldown and a high cost. My bow attacks feel weighty, rather than like a machine gun strapped to my Ranger's back. In a lot of games, when I have the choice between a long bow and a short bow, I always choose the long bow for this very reason. And on this topic, EQ2 does an interesting thing with its Ranger. Now, I'm no expert on damage parsing, but from my understanding, to achieve maximum DPS, you should be weaving your combat arts in between your auto attacks. To do this, you need to know the cooldowns and get a really good feel for how they best fit into this pattern. I find that very interesting and it certainly would add to a slower, more practiced pace of play. Now admittedly, I didn't play long enough to experience this myself. In gaining a basic understanding of how the class played, I was certainly just waiting for my skills to come off cooldown most of the time without much nuance. But at greater expertise, this is something I think would greatly add to the skill ceiling of the class. Therefore, I approve. With the assumption that what I saw was an accurate representation, I would give the EQ2 Ranger's pace of play an A-. On the class identity side of things, the EQ2 Ranger has my all-time favorite skill, which is of course, tracking. There's nothing more Ranger-esque in my opinion than finding rare spawns, named mobs, and other points of interest in the world through tracking and leading your group to that location. And therein lies one of my biggest complaints about the EQ2 Ranger. All scout classes can use tracking just as efficiently. It's not a skill that gets better over time or changes in any way by class or with use. 
It's just the same level 1 as it is at level 100. Such an iconic skill needs to be a ranger exclusive, or at least something that the ranger can take to a greater level. This not being the case in EQT really hurts class identity in my opinion. As a chain armor wearing class, the ranger looks like a ranger in my book. The dual wielding, bow slung over the back look is just what I'm looking for here. But identity is more than just how you look. Well, according to most people anyway. EQ2 class identity is supported by the classic group role trinity approach of tanks, healers, and DPS. Not being entirely familiar with the other classes in the scout archetype, I'm not in a position to expand on the differences. However, in our group, I found my role very similar to our previously shown rogue friend, as we would often both be stealthed, trying to position ourselves behind the mob and battling for the top of the DPS output in the fight. While fighting to do your role the best is fine, and also fun, I felt a little too much like a rogue at times. Of course, it didn't help that he could also track mobs and party members just as well as I could, so maybe he was too much of a ranger. Either way, there was quite a bit of overlap in our limited time playing EQ2. I'd be interested to see at max level where class identity lands. So for class identity, EQ2 is hamstrung by slightly by the shared archetype concept. And tracking being a skill available to all scouts is simply unacceptable. But at the same time, in our group, I felt like my role was important and I was valuable. So overall, the feel was what I consider a ranger to be, so I'm really torn on this grade. I'll be generous here and grade the EQ2 ranger's class identity as a B-. It's a little too much rogue and not enough ranger. The Pantheon Ranger, as it's described at PantheonMMO.com, certainly shares DNA with the EQ2 Ranger. It's a light chain wearing class that focuses on its damage dealing role in the group. The Pantheon Ranger appears to be conceptually closer to a 50-50 efficacy when it comes to ranged and melee balance, which is something I mentioned earlier I think I would prefer. While being the king of ranged physical damage is a nice feeling, I would not want to see the Ranger and Pantheon aspire to this at the cost of melee versatility like we see in EQ2. So what can it take from this? Well, as referenced, giving the Ranger tools to manage its threat level is essential, and I feel like EQ2 did a good job with this. In fact, it's almost overkill in EQ2 now, given how the game has changed over the years. I personally found it very difficult to pull the mob off the tank even when I was unloading all my damage into it. The Pantheon Ranger doesn't have any obvious threat management tools at this point, leaving it to the player to throttle their damage output accordingly. Now I don't mind that either, but I do feel like there needs to be at least one tool that can assist the Pantheon Ranger when the mob turns on them. I mean, it's not always the Ranger's fault, right? So with the grades I've given so far, keeping in mind it's not just an average, I'm going to give the EQ2 Ranger a strong B+. Sometimes the whole is more than the sum of its parts, and I think this applies here. When the areas I've identified already come together, they form a Ranger that was fun to play, had group value, and could certainly develop into a powerful class. I enjoyed playing EQ2 a lot while researching this video, and will probably continue to play. Remember, this is just my subjective opinion, so take it for what it's worth. EQ2 is a good MMO from a more traditional time in the genre. While it's not the same game it was when it came out, the roots of good group play and class identity are still there more or less, and the EQ2 Ranger is a good example of what makes the class special. Until next time, cheers, and thanks for watching.